Greetings from a rainy raglan. This video is showing you how you can get your front suspension arm out without dropping the battery from your Tesla Model S. So it involves cutting this bolt and long story short, get yourself a sabre saw and get yourself a carbide tipped six inch blade. I got this Diablo six inch thick metal blade and you will have a wonderful time. Very early in the rest of the video, you'll see where to saw. Um, and the rest of it is just me waffling. So check the information if that's what you need. And if you're just bored and trying to escape from the kids, stay to listen to me waffle. All right, see ya. Hello and welcome from the floor of my workshop where I am currently trying to get my Tesla past its um, safety inspection. Now, the car, ouch, we're at the front here. The car has failed. Oh, let's go on the outside actually. Because the lower ball joint here is too loose. And so it needs a new one. Now you generally replace that by changing the whole of the arm with the various joints in it. Currently there's a few bits missing. However, Tesla, when they assemble this at the factory, they put this bolt in when the battery is out. And so they put the bolt in this way, meaning that when you want to take this bolt out and you consult the service manual, it says drop the battery. Well, bugger that for a game of soldiers. The accepted way in the aftermarket apparently is to do what I'm currently doing, which is to saw through the bolt and put new bolts in. And you can put the bolts in that way. Um, to me, that kind of sums up some of Tesla's behavior. I'd say this bolt was put in by the management, whereas the rest of the car was done by engineering. I like their engineering, I don't like their management. So I'm not willing to believe that this is engineering. Um, so, I've already done the other side. And I thought I'd show you guys where you can saw without destroying the car. Because, high tensile bolt, aluminium mount. If your saw hits the mount, it's going to go through it so quickly that your car is now just a scrapyard car or you have to get some dodgy back street welding done and hope that nobody notices. So yeah, don't hit the aluminium. A bit like trying to, I don't know, melt, trying to avoid cut butter essentially. It really, the saw goes through aluminium like butter. Not that I found out on this car, luckily. Um, so yeah, the saw here, this is a Milwaukee um, Sabre saw or saws all, but I mean, all saws are more or less the same. Um, and this is a pretty damned expensive, um, this is a Diablo, let me just, look. a Diablo thick metal, I can't remember exactly what, but it was very expensive. You can see where the, um, where the cutting is actually happening, if it will focus up near the end there. So yeah, carbide tip, that's it. So that's where we do the cutting. Um, and that's the blade, and if I can prop the camera up somewhere good, I really should get a tripod, um, then you can maybe see it in action. And if I ruin it, you can see me swearing and shouting and screaming. All right, cut!
think we might be through. There we go. One bolt, beautifully cut. And then, here we go. Other end. Man, that is a good blade. Look how clean that is. I doubt it's focusing. I hope you saw some of the um, action. I've got no idea if the camera was actually pointing in the right direction. Okay, so. So just for your information, I was cutting through the actual bushing here, or the sleeve I suppose you should say. Sorry, is that... Let me pick up the camera. So yeah, as you can see I cut through the sleeve, so I was actually cutting a lot more metal than I needed to, but that's fairly soft. I chose to do that because that way the saw is definitely pinched against something and it's something that um, is sacrificial. So you, know, you don't want the saw bouncing around, you want it in something, but you don't want it in something that you care about. And ha luckily that sleeve is exactly the thing. Also, I wasn't sure if I would get, if I was cutting close enough to the head when I was cutting there, but yes, turns out I had plenty of room. Um, because there you can see the bolt is out. So how much, yeah, there we go. And these are very, in and of themselves, very expensive bolts because they are off-center. I mean, they're very expensive in the grand scheme of bolts. They're not expensive compared to the whole car. Um, one last thing. No, I'll do that in front of the packaging. Ah, here we are, back the right way up with my carbide teeth. So let's give you a bit of a summary. The blade that I found actually worked was this thing here, which apparently the camera doesn't work with. Diablo carbide teeth for thick metal and six inch, the blade six inch doesn't crash into the car, which is very useful. Where I am, you can only buy them in three packs. Um, and looking at the way that has lasted, I shan't be needing the other two anytime soon. But yeah, cheap blades do not do the job. So buy an expensive blade, buy it once, get the job done easily. Also, it cut through this. Oh, that's the one I started with the cheap blade. It cut through like butter. It really, it's a lovely finish. Get the right tool, get the job done. So yeah, right tools. There is the aftermarket replacement bolt, 10.9. We can only take um, our word for it, or their word for it, I should say, that it's a 10.9, but it looks, looks like it's just about the same. Got the same washer, yep. Should be all right. And then here is the new aftermarket, not Tesla part. So you can see the Tesla has actually got the the web cut away, because really that doesn't apply to m add much strength. But it's, it's thicker here. Now, I wonder if this is based on a new or an old design, because I know that Tesla have changed this quite a few times, but they are backwards compatible. Yeah, also this one here comes with a nice new nylock. And there we go. This one is not replaceable, because you can't push that out. Maybe you could pull it out, I don't know. What I do know is that I've had one of these fail where basically you can see the middle circle is the ball joint that gets pushed in the whole thing and so the suspension arm is only this bit here and I had one where it's like snapped along that line there and that's fallen out and the car has luckily it was only being driven around a workshop but yeah the car suspension basically collapsed. So that was not good, so hopefully this one is the upgraded and stronger one, because it's, yeah, all, it's got more metal around there, it looks like. Um, it always seems harsh when they fail you on a ball joint, but, like, really, ball joints, 
you shouldn't be able to move them like that when they're new. Like the first time I got one of these, I thought it was, I'd been sold a broken one because a new one. It's so tight, you've really got to lean on it. Yeah, there we go, I made it move. So basically, if you can move it without really trying, it's kind of probably on its way to being failed. So yeah, there we go, that's the jaw. If you are facing this situation, you've probably stopped watching the video by now. Use a sabre saw, it's just fine. Pick a good spot where you can get access with the saw, as I showed you before. And maybe go in like I did through the sleeve, or well, definitely go in through the sleeve so you've got a guide for the saw. Um, and I was on the back nearest the battery. Well, I hope that's been useful for you. Um, I guess I'll start putting this back together. I'm waiting on the rebuilt suspension dampers because they also fail. Um, this car, it was a crash repaired car. Um, one of the rear dampers just after 100,000 has started leaking. Um, and it turns out that the, the springs at least, maybe the dampers too, side to side on this back one, were not matched. So when you get a car repaired um, after a crash, be sure that whoever's repairing it gets the um, correct specifications of everything. I've had this once before as well with a van where they rebuilt it with secondhand suspension from another van that was completely wrong. Anyhow, I was in the process of saying goodbye. Goodbye! <clears throat> like a can of paint, shake vigorously before application.